energy is scavenging. It means to search or define energy for usage. Comparison of energy sources. Energy scavenging, that is to find or search energy. Depending on application, high capacity batteries that last for long times, that is, have only a negligible self discharge rate and that can efficiently provide small amounts of current. Ideally, a sensor node also has a device for energy scavenging, recharging the battery with energy gathered from the environment. So, such as solar cells or vibration based power generation and are conceivable options. Photo Voltex. The well-known solar cells can be used to power sensor node. The available power depends on whether nodes are used outdoor or indoor and on time of day and weather for outdoor usage. The resulting power is somewhere between 10 microvolt indoors and 15 microvolt outdoors. Single cells achieve a fairly stable output voltage of about 0.6 volt. As long as the drone current does not exceed a critical threshold, which depends on light intensity. Hence, solar cells are usually used to recharge secondary batteries. Temperature gradient. Differences in temperature can be directly converted to electrical energy. Vibrations. One most pervasive form of mechanical energy is vibrations. Walls or windows in buildings are resonating with cars or trucks passing in the street. Machinery often has low frequency vibration. Pressure vibration, somewhat akin to vibration, a variation of pressure can be used as a power source. Flow of air liquid. Another often used power source is the flow of air or liquid in windmills or turbines. The challenge here is again the miniaturization, but some of the work are millimeter scale. MEMS gas turbine might be reusable. Comparison of energy sources. The first energy source seen is the batteries that has zinc air and the second one is the batteries that has rechargeable lithium. The energy density for both the energy sources are given correspondingly. The next source is the solar that is used outdoor and the solars that are used for indoor and then comes vibration, acoustic noise, passive human powered system and nuclear reaction. For all of these energy sources, we have the corresponding power density. Energy consumption of sensor nodes. Energy efficiency is the key requirement to maximize sensor node lifetime. Sensor nodes are typically powered by a battery source that has finite lifetime. Hence, the energy consumption of a sensor node must be tightly controlled. The main consumer of energy are the controller, the radio front ends, the memory and type of sensor. One method to reduce power consumption of these components is designing low power chip. It is the best starting point for energy efficient sensor node, but any advantages gained by such designs can easily be squandered or wasted when the components are improperly operated. Second method for energy efficiency in wireless sensor node is reduced functionality by using multiple states of operation with reduced energy consumption. These modes can be introduced for all components of a sensor node, in particular for controller, radio front end, memory and sensors. So energy consumption of sensor nodes are further classified into four. They are microcontroller energy consumption, memory energy consumption, radio transceiver energy consumption, power consumption of sensor and actuators. Let's see one after the other. Microcontroller energy consumption. For a controller, typical states are active, idle and sleep. A radio modem could turn transmitter receiver or both on or off. At time T1, 
the microcontroller is to be put into sleep mode should be taken to reduce power consumption from active power to sleep power if it remains active and the next event occurs at time event t then a total energy is active energy and active power on the other hand requires a time down tau until sleep mode has been reached let the average power consumption during this phase is the sum of active power and sleep power divided by 2 then sleep power is consumed until event t the energy saved is given by saved energy is equal to and there is a equation once the event to be processed occurs however an additional overhead of overhead of energy is equal to the increase in tau in, uh, into active power and sleep power divided by 2 this gives the overhead energy memory energy consumption the most relevant kinds of memory are on chip memory and flash memory off chip ram is rarely used in fact the power needed to drive on chip memory is usually included in the power consumption numbers given for the controllers hence most relevant part is flash memory in fact the construction and usage of flash memory can heavily influence node lifetime the relevant metrics are read and write times and energy consumption read times and read energy consumption tend to be quite similar between different types of flash memory energy consumption necessary for reading and writing to the flash memory is used on the mica nodes hence writing to flash memory can be time and energy consuming task that is best avoided if somehow possible radio transceiver energy consumption a radio transceiver has essentially two tasks transmitting and receiving data between a pair of nodes similar to microcontroller radio transceivers can operate in different modes the simplest one are being turned on or turned off to accommodate the necessary low total energy consumption the transceiver should be turned off most of the time and only be activated when necessary they work at a low duty cycle the energy consumed by a transmitter is due to two sources one part is due to rf signal generation which mostly depends on chosen modulation and target distance second part is due to electronic components necessary for frequency synthesis frequency conversion filters and so on the transmitted power is generated by the amplifier of a transmitter its own power consumption amplifier power depends on its architecture power amplifier is equal to amplifier of alpha plus amplification of beta and the transmitted power where alpha amp and beta amp are constant depending on the process technology and amplifier architecture the energy to transmit a packet n bits long that depends on how long it takes to send a packet determined by the nominal bit rate r and the code rate r code and on total consumed power during the transmission is given similar to the transmitter the receiver can be either turned off or turned on while being turned on it can either actively receive a packet or can be idle observing the channel and ready to receive evidently the power consumption while it is turned off is negligible even the difference between idling and actually receiving is very small and can for most purpose be assumed to be zero to elucidate the energy received required to receive a power has a startup component start time to start power similar to the transmission case when the receiver has been turned off it also has a component that is proportional to the packet n during this time of actual reception receiver circuitry has to be powered up requiring a power of p r x e l e c that is received power power consumption of sensor and actuators 
providing any guidelines about the power consumption of the actual sensors and actuators is impossible because of the wide variety of these devices for example passive light or temperature sensor the power consumption can possibly be ignored in comparison to other devices on a wireless node for others active devices like sonar power consumption can be quite considerable in the dimensioning of power sources on the sensor node not to outstress battery